Hello, comrades. I'd like to talk about Georgi Dimitrov, a Bulgarian communist, anti-fascist leader, and prolific writer. Dropping out of school at a young age, he began working for a newspaper and joined the printing press union. He was very active and became a working class leader and organizer at a very young age. He helped lead the first armed uprising against fascism in Bulgaria in the early 20s, led the Comintern alongside of Stalin, and helped give advice and guidance to communists around the globe, from Mao to Tito and so many others. He went on to lead communist Bulgaria after they broke off the chains of the Tsar and fascism. He was imprisoned along with four other accused communists by Nazi Germany for the infamous Reichstag fire. Accused by Hitler and other top Nazi leaders, uh, which it was they themselves in fact that conspired to commit this crime in order to come to power in the upcoming election, enact dictatorial powers for Hitler, and destroy workers' organizations of Germany, which were the biggest threat to fascist rule. Dimitrov would survive two death sentences by his homeland Bulgaria for revolutionary activities, and would go on and would not just survive the Nazi German courts, but would vindicate not only his own name and reputation, but communism itself defeating the German fascist in their own court, defending himself and communism itself, outplaying the Nazis in their own game. I'd like to read a few excerpts from Dimitrov's diary, starting from the beginning of his imprisonment by the Nazis until shortly before his release. He was imprisoned from March 1933 until February 1934. While in custody, his wife committed suicide. He was kept in shackles, without access to news and books and most outside contact, denied representation in court, and in so many other ways isolated and tortured. Yet through all of this, he remains the perfect example of revolutionary optimism and practice in his actions and in his ideas. This does read like a diary, and the last entry is an interview, so keep this in mind while listening. Also, this copy of the book has notations from the editor, which provides some great historical insight, but also, by the wording, contained propaganda opposing the very core principles of Marxism-Leninism that Dimitrov spent his entire life fighting so hard for. So if you can, I urge you to support another publisher. Let's get started. April 5th, 1933. Handcuffs. By order of the investigating magistrate. Perhaps in response to my request to ease my personal situation in prison. Or as a method of interrogation. April 6th, 1933. Wrote to the judge about the handcuffs. If this is punishment, I do not deserve it. If it is intended as a security measure, then it is not necessary, because as a well-known Bulgarian political personality, I think not at all of the responsibility of withdrawing or fleeing. On the contrary, I have my own interest and political honor, which has been damaged through this current accusation to defend and rescue. April 26, 1933. To the investigating magistrate, please allow me to remind you that I still await information about 1. Discussion with my lawyer. 2. Transfer to the cashier of the remand prison the 5 million of my seized money that was derequisitioned. 3. Letter to Miss Kaiser that was not sent. Number four, German textbook from Mr. Interpreter. In addition, 
I have just ascertained that I often receive the correspondence addressed to me with great delay. Only yesterday, for example, I received a letter from Miss Kruger dated April 19th, that is on the sixth day. I understand completely that some time is needed for inspection, but this cannot explain and even less justify a delay of almost a week. Miss Kruger also complained that she hadn't received a letter from me for an entire week. I request that you authorize my correspondence as a prisoner awaiting trial to be delivered more regularly whenever possible. Finally, I remind you that I am still handcuffed day and night. With these handcuffs on, I must write and read, sit and sleep. Isn't it enough for you that I have endured this moral and physical torment for almost a month? Isn't it time that this barbaric measure be removed? May 1st, 1933. Moscow, Berlin, two historical antipodes. And I sit and Malabit handcuffed, dreadful and deplorable. May 4th, 1933. To the investigating magistrate, naturally, I do not need to thank you for notifying me that you refuse to release the money seized from me. And yet by this action, you have freed me from a fleeting illusion. I assumed for a moment that at least in this connection, I would be treated as a political person who is not actually guilty of arson and who is in jail only because of his convictions and his acceptance of his communist duty. No worse than a robber or murderer, and that I can count on a few marks from my money for a textbook and newspaper. Now I see that this was an illusion. I may not recover any of my money. I may not receive any visitors. And at the same time, I must be handcuffed day and night, although the most dangerous murder in prison is not placed in such a position. Yes, this is just and logical. I mustn't forget for one moment that I am in the hands of class enemies who also strive to take advantage of justice as a weapon to exterminate communism. That is, in fact to destroy its competent, determined, and reliable representatives, independent of the personal views of the individual judge. Excuse me, please, Mr. Counselor of the Supreme Court, for openly expressing my opinion, my perception. Unfortunately, I cannot say these things to anyone else. May 6th. 1933. A day without anything. No letters, no news, no prison event. Nothing, not even the usual shave. I also did not write to anyone, owing to a shortage of postal fees. Not a penny do I have. I'm going to skip over a couple of entries here. December 16th, 1933. My speech. One is not allowed to speak about the situation in Germany at the time of the Reichstag fire, not about the legal proceedings, nor about the actual necessity of the fire for the National Socialist, and so on. My petitions. One, not guilty because of insufficient guilt and not because of insufficient proof. Two, van der Lubbe as a tool of misused by the enemies of the working class to present their view of communism. Three, to hold accountable the person responsible for our being drawn into this trial. Four, damages for the time lost and the harm done to the health of these people. After advice of the Senate, decision, Further closing remarks from Dimitrov, not allowed. The right to speak, withdrawn. February 5th, 
1934. With Detective Superintendent Heller, almost all officials known from the Fire Commission, an American correspondent. He wants to inquire about my health. The world is very interested. In America, a film is even being made and so forth. Are you healthy and being treated well? I give no interviews, no explanation, for I am not a free man. I am a prisoner of war. I am a hostage. It is no wonder that my health is deteriorated. Five months of handcuffs, three month long trial, two months acquitted, but not yet released. But you aren't tortured? Moral torture day in, day out. I hold the view that if my destruction is necessary for the government, then the government should carry it out. But the authorities should give their reasons and accept the responsibility before the world and not stage an unworthy game. Yes, they do, they do that in Russia. Permit me. In Russia, it is impossible that innocent persons who have been acquitted by the court should remain in prison one hour longer. You understand the government has political consideration, the campaign abroad, questions of prestige, and so on. I do not believe that is a rational policy to hold us in prison. Do you believe that you will be released? To look at the situation in a politically rational way, I should already have been released. But reason does not always govern the world. Have you given up your Bulgarian citizenship? No, I will never give it up. If you return to Bulgaria, you will be shot, they say. That is a problem for the government. I will live another 20 years and fight for communism and then die peacefully. You must now be patient. The government cannot capitulate to foreign countries. I have enough patience, but if matters should continue, then I have one last weapon for self-defense, the hunger strike. Yes, but you want to live another hundred or you want to live another 20 years. That is a matter of opinion. To conclude, if you are a conscientious correspondent, that I am, I would like to think so, then convey to the public my decisive protest against this barbaridity that I and my Bulgarian comrades are still held in prison as hostages. That's out of the diary of Georgi Dimitrov. Let's see here. There we go. All right. Uh, thank you for listening, comrades. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your social media, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more anti-fascist and Marxist-Leninist content. Thank you.